Good Friday morning. Uh, it's good to be with you again. Um, jumping right in. Hopefully we'll, we'll move through quick. I just want to share a few thoughts with you on this Friday morning, looking like it's great weather uh, down here in Northport. Uh, we're going to jump in Matthew 28, 16 through 20. It says, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. One of the things that, that um, I think every single person um, has experienced that has ever had a job is you get given a task and your immediate thought is that's not in my job description. Uh, I remember when I was 16 years old, I had a job uh, in, in um, Columbus, Ohio at the Half Off Card Shop. I know that's a weird name, but it was a party supply place. I get my first job. I'm trying to, to do a good job and, and someone, an older gentleman came into the shop and um, had some issues and used the bathroom all over the floor, all over the shop. And being the low person on the totem pole, it was my job to clean it up. Now, I can guarantee you, I thought in there, that's not in my job description. This is not what I had in mind uh, when I first took this job. Um, but I did it. So some of the times we've said it or heard it, and it may not have been to that extreme, but this morning I want to look at our lives as believers and, and how so many of us have said this exact thing to God. Maybe not in our words, you know, we haven't said, God, that's not in my job description, but we've said it with our actions. And so the first thing I want to look at, look at this morning is that we are called to go. Verse 19, if you remember, says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And there are some scholars who believe that because this passage men mentions that some still doubted, that the ascension happened in front of a larger audience than the remaining 11 disciples, perhaps even a crowd of 500 that Paul mentions later. Either way, this call is to all those who follow him. We must be willing to go whenever, wherever, and however. So we're called to go. We're also called to make disciples. Remember I said, go therefore and make disciples. Uh, out of our desire to win converts, and, and, and we've often tried to make Jesus more convenient. Jesus is not convenient. And, and that's what our culture is all about is convenience. Um, we often make following Jesus comfortable. We make it easy. Um, we reduce the expectations. You don't have to do anything different. Just believe. We've turned following Jesus into something that never, it never was meant to be. And that's safe. Following Jesus has never been safe. Diedrich Bonhoeffer's idea of when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. That's not safe. If we tell people that following Jesus is safe, we shouldn't be surprised when people fall away when things get difficult. And we live in a consumer-based society. Many times people bring those same attitudes right into church. It's my way, my preferences, my desires that are important. If I don't get my way, well, I'm just going to take my business elsewhere. But Jesus didn't come to take sides. Jesus came to take complete control of our lives. So what's the difference between a disciple and a convert? Many people come to Jesus thinking it's enough to believe, and then they stand on the sidelines and they root for him. Jesus isn't looking for any cheerleaders. He doesn't need any of those. He's seeking men and women who will follow him, whatever the cost. He's looking for radical devotion, this unreasonable commitment, this undivided dedication. Jesus isn't looking for converts. He's looking for disciples. Converts are new believers. We all start as converts. Too often we stop there. 
I think a majority of Christians in the American church stop at a convert. We make Christianity all about what we believe. And converts aren't bad or wrong. Converts are, are, are like babies. Remember, Paul talked about us being babies and, and needing the meat of the word at some point. The problem comes when that doesn't change. When a baby acts like a baby, it's cute. When a 37-year-old does it, that's kind of sad. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 13, 11, When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. Imagine a world full of, of babies. That might be cute for like two minutes. We all love playing with babies, but if it's full of babies, that's going to be exhausting. Um, don't believe me, look at a mother or a father with a few babies in the house. They always look tired, don't they? And, and so this, this, this concept of, of a world full of babies sometimes applies to the church. You have a church full of spiritual babies. And so it shouldn't surprise us that some churches struggle. If, if a church is full of spiritual babies, it's going to struggle. And so for years, churches have worked to get people to make a decision to accept Christ, which is a great and important thing. But what happens next? We can't stop there. Where's the follow-up? How do we train new Christians? Not only is a disciple willing to die for Jesus, but they are dedicated to living every single day of their life for him. Our job is not to win converts. That is not what Jesus called to do. He, it's not what he wanted us to do. It's more than that. It's building off of that. And that is to make disciples. So what is the major difference? Converts are believers who are still learning and live like the world or don't know any better yet. Disciples are believers who live like Jesus. Converts are focused on their values, interests, worries, fears, priorities, and lifestyles. Disciples are focused on Jesus. Converts go to church. Disciples are the church. Converts are involved in the missions of Jesus. They're learning. They're, they're figuring things out. Disciples are committed to it. Converts cheer from the sidelines. Disciples are the ones in the game. Converts hear the word of God. Disciples live the word of God. Converts follow the rules. Disciples follow Jesus. Converts are all about believing. Disciples are all about being. Converts are comfortable. Disciples make sacrifices. Converts talk. Disciples make more disciples. A disciple is someone who wholeheartedly follows the life and example of Jesus, who makes mission, who makes his mission their mission, his values their values. And this is important. It makes his heart their heart. A disciple is someone who desperately seeks to be like Jesus. Someone so committed to the cause of Christ that they would follow him anywhere. A disciple is someone who finds their entire identity, their purpose, and their meaning in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the center of their lives. They are all in, fully committed. Not only is a disciple willing to die for Jesus, they are dedicated to living every single day of their life for him. We're to baptize. It's an easy one, right? Baptism is only for disciples. I can't make a six-month-old a disciple. A baby is unable to mentally or spiritually comprehend what being a disciple is about, knowing the steps they are taking. We also baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Acts, it, is also, it also is worded as in the name of the Lord. Baptism is identifies us as with God. We're to teach them. Verse 20 says, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. I think this is where we tend to mess up. 
we can easily report how many people have been saved. You know, we've all seen the reports. If, if you go to church, this many people saved, this many people attended, this many people baptized. But we can't give a number for how many disciples we have. And I think that's a ne neglected area for us. There's not usually a big demand for people to be taught. Saved people need to be taught. All of us need to continue to be taught. Believers who aren't taught to serve well or follow God don't. If they're not taught to do these things, they don't do them. If we don't grow them, they're not going to do them. And I think that's the reason many churches struggle is because they're full of spiritual babies who have never been taught. So what do we do to teach them? We're to teach them scripture. All the things that Christ commanded us. We're to teach them how to grow spiritually and then have them teach. Every single one of us are called to teach. That doesn't mean we're called to teach groups of people. That means we're called to teach one-on-one. -on -one. Every single one of us we're called to that. You're like, Ryan, I, I can't do that. I can't talk to people. We talk to people all the time. Remember, Moses was unable to talk, he said. And God used him to lead millions. But Moses didn't do it on his own. In verse 20, he gives us the best news of all. Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. That's the key. He says we're not alone. He goes with us every step of the way. No matter how difficult the road, and this is a vital thing for us to remember, when we share the gospel, he is with us. The power behind the mission isn't ours, it's his. He is the power behind the mission. And, and very rarely are we given a job that we just have to show up. I've heard stories of, of workers in you know, the auto industry. I remember my dad telling me, that their only job was to show up and go to the break room. Um, I find it hard to believe, but those stories are out there. We're called to do more than just show up on Sunday and Wednesday. Lord, help us that we have to do a, a faith, faith visitation or we have to do a prayer time or whatever it is. We're called to do more than just show up. We're called to make disciples. And that is something convicting to me. And I think it's something that should be convicting to all of us is that we need to do the things that we have been commanded. And this is the big one. We're called to make disciples. We have to quit being afraid, or even worse, indifferent, to sharing the gospel and discipling others once they come to Christ. We do all of this through the power of the Holy Spirit. Hopefully this is an encouragement to you and a challenge. It's a challenge to me um, that we are called to make disciples and called to teach, and, and called to, to grow his kingdom, because disciples make disciples, make disciples, make disciples, and so on and so on. Hope you all have a wonderful Friday and a great weekend. Enjoy the sunshine, and hope to see you all tonight at uh, Northport Free Will Baptist Church at Voice of the Martyrs at 630. Uh, if you are unable to, to get out, if you're homebound, um, we will post a link for you to click on on our Facebook page um, so that you can join the official live stream from Voice of the Martyrs. Um, so we'll have that at 6.30 tonight. Um, the countdown will start about 6 o'clock, I believe, um, on that, on the, on the live stream link. Uh, and also, we hope to see you all on Sunday morning and Sunday night this week. Hope you all have a great day, and God bless.